Okay, hello friends, this is Yusuf here. Welcome to part 3 of our Crash Course API tutorial. Um, so, before we go on to this tutorial, I would like to give you some in, uh, information. So, first of all, I have created this playlist called uh, Crash Course API because uh, this playlist will be containing our uh, series of videos along with all the references which I am going to give. Okay, So, please make sure to check out this uh, playlist. I will be giving the link to this playlist in all my videos description. Okay, Now, let us get started for this video. So, last time uh, we have seen um, you know how to consume the HTTP GET method. Okay, So, we have seen various examples. But today, uh, we are going to see how to implement a get, HTTP GET request by our own. Uh, obviously, we are going to do it uh, in Python. But at the same time, I will be giving you the references on IBM RPG how to do that. Okay, let's get started. So here we go. Uh, the first thing first. So we all know uh, we can uh, consume and create uh, HTTP GET methods in IBM RPG, right? Uh, so how can we do that? So we have various options to do that. So here are few. Uh, basically, if you want to consume an external API or uh, I want to make a HTTP GET request from my IBM AS400, then we can do in following ways. The first and mostly uh, uh, kind of famous way uh, is to use um, uh, HTTP API, which is an open source by uh, Scott Clement. Okay? Uh, you can go and then see on his website. Uh, anyway, so it is basically a save file, you can download and then uh, upload into your AS400 and then you will uh, like kind of uh, restore the save file then you will get all the programs you need to make the http request okay and it comes with a lot of examples so i have made a separate video and in fact a series of videos on that so i will be giving the link uh, to the description as well as i will be adding those videos in my playlist okay for your reference the second way uh, is to use http get globe which is an X sql uh, procedure built in by uh, ibm so, if you do not want to use an open source or you do not have an option to install uh, Scott's library, then you can use HTTP GET loop. But uh, we have some limitation with that. I will not say limitation, but basically while implementing you will find some extra barriers on it actually. Uh, from my experience, I have used a lot of uh, Scott's API, I mean Scott's HTTP API uh, open source library. but. Uh, very use less on the HTTP GET flow, but still it is an option to uh, consume the API. So again I have a separate video for this, I will give in the list, uh, link in the description and also add it in the playlist. So these two are kind of a native solution uh, what we have in IBM AS400. But if you just talk about the way to consume API, we can still do it in other ways. Say for example, our IBM AS supports Java and if you have Java, you can basically do the API call, which means if you just open uh, IFS file and write a Java code and just go to your uh, QSH, which is your shell command, and then you start executing it, then you will get an output. Okay, uh, it's still an option, but I'm not sure how many of us are uh, actually doing it. Okay, the other uh, famous or uh, not famous, uh, the reason ways we can do something like uh, Python Node.js. So uh, if we in IBM I, there is a support for open source in general, uh, it is available and uh, I also made a video how to uh, call an API using a, using Node.js and Python uh, in IBM I. So I will give the link also in the description. So in general these are the ways and the last one is the curl, basically we also support this curl um, command in our IBM I using which we can also consume an API request. So the bottom line is we have more than one way to consume API in IBM I. Okay, if you think that uh, we may not do it in AS400 because it's an old technology, no, it's not the case. Okay, there are a lot of other ways. Uh, these are the common ways. Uh, so yeah, so just the point here is we can do consume HTTP method in IBM I. Second way, how do we create one? Okay, because if you want to expose my data from our IBM AS400 as a web service, uh, okay, so that other parties or uh, our other applications within the same project needs to consume the data, how do we do that? Again, we have more than one way of doing it. The one common way is to use an Apache HTTP server, which comes built in from version 5.1 and above, I think 5.1 or 5.4, I'm not sure. Anyway, so it's called Apache default web service 
So basically you can go and edit the configuration file, create your own endpoint and you can write an RPG program uh, you know, and you can directly create one uh, URL which points to that program and that program can return the data to the browser. So again I will be giving my video reference for this, how to implement that uh, in the playlist, you can go through it. Okay. And the other thing is uh, IWS. So IWS stands for Integrated Web Server, which is actually uh, uh, we have an UI tool as well. I think if you go to your uh, IBM I IP uh, colon two zero zero one slash HTTP admin, then it will open up that thing. Okay, it's kind of an interactive way of creating a web server web service. Okay, but I have not explored much, but I have read few videos on it. You can go ahead and watch those things. Okay. And then the modern way of doing it actually if your IBM is having Python or Node.js then obviously you can write the no, uh, JavaScript code or the Python code which reads your data from your physical file and then uh, sends the data over to the web using the uh, built-in uh, you know the packages what they have okay. Anyway, so this is just reference which I want to give with respect to IBM and AS400. But for this video, what we are going to do, we are going to do one hands-on with respect to Python. We are just going to create a simple uh, web server and uh, endpoint uh, and we are going to see how this works. And also we will see how the status codes and other things are works. Okay, So let us get into that. So what I have, I am going to do, I have an empty folder. As you can see there is one, nothing here. Uh, so I am going to do something like a pip env shell. So this is a python command which will create a virtual environment for this folder. I am not going to deep into that but I am just telling you. And then I am going to say pip env uh, install flask. So flask is actually a package um, uh, which is a micro framework for python using which we can create a web application. So when I say web application it is also used to create uh, APIs and so on because we are dealing we are all dealing with the HTTP methods fine so now we have this I'm going to create uh, I have opened this folder in Visual Studio code so I'm going to create a new file or program called python.py so let's see how simple it is to create a simple API in Python okay so the first line of code will be something like uh, import uh, flask from Okay, it should be capital F. Okay, sorry, from flask import capital flask. Okay, then we need to create a variable, normally it is called as app, okay, uh, which is equal to we need to call this function flask, but we need to pass underscore underscore name, okay. Uh, then with this variable we can create endpoints so something like uh, but we need to annotate this which means at app whatever the variable we need to put at in front of it then route is to create an endpoint so we are going to create a base endpoint which is slash then we can create a function in uh, below it uh, let us create index function then uh, let us return welcome to crash course okay and then if you want this is a simple uh, function if you want to make it run basically we need to say uh, app dot run if you want to in run it in debug mode i'll say debug equal to true okay save so this is a file line of code we need to make a simple uh, web server running and also to return and response from an endpoint okay let's see so let's run python app dot pi so it's running in port 5000 so if you go to my uh, browser and type localhost 5000, we should be able to see the response. So uh, now let us make a little bit of uh, code which means instead of returning to a simple um, text, I am going to return uh, JSON. So let us create a new endpoint app.route. Uh, uh, so by convention, if you are creating any uh, REST APIs, uh, it is good to keep uh, you know, some base endpoint, something like API slash v1 slash then whatever the resource name. Let us give it as users and uh, let us create uh, a variable users with some data. Uh, let me have something like id1 name Yusuf. ok this is one uh, user object say for example and then let us give a 2 name 
okay so assume this is our data okay and uh, here my next endpoint is going to be app dot route but i already created that okay so if i hit this endpoint i want to call a function called get users and uh, this is going to return uh, that users but since i want as json there is a method called uh, jsonify which comes from flask itself jsonify okay save let's see what this endpoint returns to us so let's go here type uh, api slash v1 slash users so we get a response now the point here is if i take f12 okay and it's a network tab same way if we refresh now you see we are calling users and we are getting 200 response and we can see content type application slash json right uh, we did not give anything 200 anything like that but it, by default it will be 200 if you go to our uh, normal um, uh, home route we get we are calling a local host we are getting 200 but here you can see it's text.html so the python itself the python web server itself is setting few uh, headers by itself okay that is the point i am trying to make so last video we have seen how do we see these headers but here we are seeing uh, while implementing how these headers are automatically set uh, now uh, just to add for this one more thing uh, assume if i want to create one uh, route if i go for any invalid url say for example i go to slash abc then it says not found okay but uh, here you can see automatically it says 404 as well okay uh, where we can see here but what if you want to give a message to here okay so we can do something like that uh, at app dot error handler of 404 okay def uh, invalid route this name you can give anything is simply a function name that will get executed whenever this uh, annotation is matching okay return uh, invalid route okay save now you will see a difference here if you if you uh, go to this url again uh, okay oh, we need to pass this also take, comes with an error argument okay save see whenever i save this program i am not restarting the server because we gave uh, debug as true so here you can see whenever uh, we are uh, saving it it's automatically restarting the server okay that's the point also to make anyway so here if i refresh now we see our response coming and here we will see it's now 200 not 404 why because because we are responding some data so it thinks it's a uh, you know uh, correct response or not correct response at least the application is responding so it's giving 200 but if we still want to make 404 then i'll i'll come here and then basically here it will give comma 404 it's a basically a flask way of returning the um, response code okay now if i save and come again let's clear everything and if i try again now this time you get 404 with with our message okay so anyway this these are some implementation uh, which i want to cover so now you are getting an idea uh, normally you know how to consume the http api so we last time we did using several ways right like curl postman and so on so the same way this our api also will work so here you can see we have the api and send uh, we should be able to see the data uh, okay it should be 5000 Fine. So this is how uh, we create our own API and then expose to the uh, outside world uh, and this is how we handle the HTTP headers and methods and so on. So the more to come uh, in our next video we are going to see the post method which is a very very um, important method I would say uh, which is being used for uh, creating the resources and submitting forms and uh, user in password and so on. So we will see that in our next video. I hope this helps you and uh, please make sure to check out the playlist because you have a lot of references of my previous videos which will help you to understand more okay i think that's it for this video i hope you like it um, uh, please share it with your friends if you feel this is useful and i'll see you in the next video with a continuation thanks for watching